in this short video, I want to say a few words about what I learned on my live stream yesterday about Jim Harbaugh, Joe Milton, and the entire state of the Michigan football program. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar and this is Big Discussions 76 Sports. First of all, please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, yeah, please subscribe. I'm sitting at, I believe, 467. That means I am 33 subscribers away from 500. So if you're watching this and you're new, Please push me up to the 500 mark. Well, there was no Michigan football game yesterday uh, due to COVID. Uh, so the Maryland game got canceled. And I wasn't going to do a live stream yesterday. Uh, but some of uh, the gang who's been coming to this channel regularly for Michigan football content requested that I do a live stream uh, by myself and... With the help of the commenters, uh, I went out for an hour and a half, and then Alex Dilworth, shout out to Alex, uh, came in uh, during the last half hour, and then we took it out till a whole two hours. So, but the point is, there was no game yesterday, and right now, it's not clear if they're going to play the 2020 Ohio State game down in Columbus. Um... This is a pre-recorded video, so during the time um, I'm shooting this and during the time that I process it, render it, and upload it, uh, they may have decided to play the game, but I think that the topic of this video is uh, it's worth capturing nonetheless. So in the live stream yesterday, you can go back and listen to it, but I found an article, a very, very short article on this uh, online, and I suspect the program is probably trying to keep this quiet. Uh, apparently after uh, the Rutgers game uh, where Cade McNamara took over for Super Joe uh, to um, lead uh, the Wolverines um, to that narrow victory in triple overtime, uh, apparently uh, Super Joe said that uh, he's going to transfer and then when he plays Michigan, he's going to hang 50 on Michigan. Uh, I did not hear a lot about that until my live stream, which is a good reason, uh, which it's good that I did it for that reason. But, you know, I think that, uh, as Alex said during the stream, I, th I think that speaks volumes as to what's happening with the program right now. Uh, Alex pointed out that uh, one of his teammates or one of the coaches should have uh, yanked him and said, dude, you know, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Uh, you know, we don't, this is not that kind of locker room. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have that type of culture here. But I think that that speaks to what's happening in the locker room, um, assuming that's true. And it seems that it is. Uh, that's a, that implies that it's a very, very toxic locker room and a very, very toxic uh, culture uh, over there in Shem Beckler Hall right now, at least um, as it relates to the players. Uh, but that also suggests that the coaching staff has not set the culture in such a way that something like that would not happen. Because if you're trying to build a champion and a competitive team uh, year in and year out, you need a level of cohesiveness uh, amongst your players. You need your players uh, willing to go to war for one another and to sacrifice for uh, one another 
and once the locker room becomes bloody and the players become divided, yeah, that, that team is not going to go anywhere and it's not going to, well, as they say, uh, that dog's not going to hunt. Um, in much of my content as this uh, season, as this shortened, uh, unprecedented COVID-19 eight-game season has unfolded, I stated numerous times that I felt bad for Super Joe. I did predict, along with Matt Leinart, that we were going to see good things for him from him. So uh, I did predict that. Um, and the kid has run into a lot of adversities over the last eight games. And I, you, you could see it when he got pulled. Uh, I think it was during uh, Indiana or, no, he, I think he played for the entire Michigan State game aside from those two Wildcat plays. But as he got pulled, you could see on his face that he wasn't, you know, that he wasn't taking it well. And to be the Michigan quarterback is a big deal, and it comes with a lot of scrutiny. And, you know, it's like being the president. When you're performing well, you get all the credit. And when you and the team is not performing well, you get a lot of the criticism. But for a young kid like that, uh, that's got to be a tremendous disappointment, especially to have been the starter uh, at the beginning of the year. And if that kid does not have the mental tools to deal with that, and if the coaching staff is not helping the kid cope with that, and if the locker room is not cohesive enough to deal with something like that, then you're going to get uh, a toxic environment. And to say that I'm going to come back and hang 50 on, on Michigan, that, I don't know, when I hear that, that um, speaks to a lot, to a degree of selfishness. Uh, that speaks to a degree of petulance. Uh, that speaks to a degree of um, me first. And I don't want to be here anyway. Screw this. And this is whack. I don't, you know, screw this. I, I don't want to be here. This is, I'm going to come back and, and take revenge on this program. So, that, but that's a part of sports though. Uh, I, I remember when I was uh, in high school, I was rooting for the, there was a stretch where I was rooting for the Houston Oilers instead of my hometown Buffalo Bills. And uh, that last year when they brought, I believe, when they brought Buddy Ryan in to run that 46 defense, Houston struggled early and uh, Jack Pardee uh, benched Warren Moon for, uh, I believe it was uh, Cody Carlson. And Warren Moon was a, a veteran and he took it and he, he eventually won his job back. But it takes a strong player mentally to be able to do something like that. And for a 20 year old who's looking at going to the NFL, the 20 year old who had seemingly won the starting job uh, to be pulled a couple of times and benched and to watch your second string quarterback go in there and to perform well, um, that, that's a lot, especially if um, the safeties and the safeguards are not in place with the coaching staff and inside that locker room to help that kid work through that, even if he does ultimately enter the transfer uh, portal to go to another school. So I just wanted to say that. I think this speaks a lot to what's happening uh, inside the Michigan locker room. And, uh, you know, Alex said that they're debating whether or not to bring uh, Jim back. Uh, and it sounds like there's a lot going on. So I'm going to keep my eyes on things. I would encourage you all as well. Uh, anything that's going to happen at this point is news. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Please like this video, please share it, and please subscribe to my channel. If you want to make a small donation, my Cash App and PayPal are in the description box below. Um, go blue. And as always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Take care, and I'll talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.